Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at single phase full wave control rectifier with RLE load. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram. Now, the first and foremost important question is why do we need to analyze the operation with an RLE load? The reason is because when we are connecting this circuit with a DC motor as a load, the DC motor will have an internal resistance, it will have an inductance, it will also have a back EMF, isn't it? So we, when we are connecting a DC motor load to the circuit, we need to understand how it performs, isn't it? And that is why we will be requiring an RLE load. Once we understand the operation of RLE load, it will be very simple when we are considering various use cases for different loads. Now, let us understand the operation of the circuit with the help of waveforms and how it behaves during positive and negative half cycles. We are considering a sinusoidal voltage source and we will be considering a battery over here with a voltage with a constant voltage say equal to E. Let us extrapolate these signals. The first and foremost important point is these type of circuits will have a minimum angle theta 1. What is theta 1? So if you carefully observe at 0, E is greater than Vs, isn't it? So at this instant, E is equal to Vs and this instant is what we call as theta 1. At omega t is equal to theta 1, at omega t is equal to theta 1, we have Vs is equal to E. So what is Vs is equal to? Vm sin omega t, but sin omega, omega t is equal to theta 1. So we'll substitute this and that is equal to E. Theta 1 is equal to sin inverse of E by Vm, isn't it? We call theta 1 as the minimum triggering angle that is required. So if you are applying a pulse before theta 1, what will happen is that you will not be able to turn on those thyristors. It has to cross through a minimum firing angle theta 1. The reason is because if you are having a thyristor, this back EMF or the e battery voltage E will reverse bias the T1 even if you are supplying a positive voltage and a gate pulse. And that is why you need to cross this theta 1. That is basically Vs should be starting to be greater than E as it is happening over here. Now let us apply a gate pulse at say equal to alpha. And if you carefully observe, alpha is greater than theta 1 in this case. Isn't it? So we have satisfied the minimum criteria of applying a gate pulse. And now let us see what happens to the output voltage. Now one important thing is that we are looking at this circuit in discontinuous mode because it is slightly complex, whereas continuous mode is pretty simple and straightforward. So let us consider during positive half cycle, plus and minus, T1 is forward bias, T2 is forward bias because plus is connected to anode of T1 and minus is connected to cathode of T2. As a result, current starts flowing through this path, current flows through this path. The inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus and the current flows through this path and it flows through this path and returns to the source in this direction. So what will be the output voltage at alpha? So I will explain why we are getting this waveform as we move further you will understand it in an easier way. But at alpha what is happening to the output voltage? At alpha when T1 and T2 is conducting V out will be equal to Vs isn't it? Because whatever we are supplying is appearing at the load terminals. There is no power consuming elements within it between the source and the load terminals. T1 and T2 will act as short circuit as a result V out will be equal to Vs. What I am trying to say is that V out from this instant will start following the supply voltage waveform in this case. This is because of T1 and T2. So we are triggering T1 and T2. Now at pi what happens the supply voltage is going negative but due to the presence of the inductor it does not allow sudden change in current. It will reverse its polarity as we have seen in the previous cases also. It will not allow sudden change in current and ensure that the current is still flowing in the same direction as it was flowing in the previous case. As a result, what happens? The voltage, the output voltage in this case will still continue to follow the supply voltage till this instant. And that is because of T1 and T2 again. That is due to the inductive load. 
I hope this point is clear. Now what happens to the this is because of D1 and D2. Now what happens to the output current? So again let us ignore the starting portion. I will explain as why we are starting like this. So the output current starts increasing at alpha isn't it because the inductor is starting to charge and it is increasing to its maximum value and at pi if you carefully observe the inductor is discharging its energy and it is supplying back to the source and it is discharging through the resistor as a result since it is discharging through the resistor the current value goes on decreasing as a result it will become equal to zero at some point say beta and this is called as the extension angle so the angle at which the output current becomes equal to zero is called as the extension angle beta so when the output current is going to zero that is what we call as discontinuous mode isn't it so the output current is becoming equal to zero at this instant so at this instant what is happening the output voltage will be equal to e because all the SCRs are basically acting as open circuit are in reverse pass condition so this will act as open circuit and if you measure the output voltage it will only be equal to E over here as a result it is E over here I hope this point is clear now let us apply another gate pulse and trigger T3 and T4 when we are triggering T3 and T4 what will happen during negative cycle that is minus and plus minus is appearing at this instant so basically t3 and t4 will be forward biased that is plus is, up, plus is appearing at the anode of t3 and minus is appearing at the cathode of t4 and the current flows through this path it flows through this path it flows through the load and the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus again it flows through this direction and it flows through this direction it comes back to the source in this direction i hope this point is clear now since T3 and T4 is conducting again V out will be equal to Vs it will start following the supply voltage waveform in the positive direction so you will be getting a waveform like this and this is because of T3 and T4 again the energy stored in the inductor will discharge through the resistor and this is because of T3 and T4 due to the energy that is stored in the inductor is discharging through the resistor again the current repeats in the same way the current through the inductor was increasing as a result it kept on increasing as it was charging and then it goes to zero again the cycle repeats in this case again this is because of t1 and t2 now what is the voltage across thyristor t1 and t2 before that we were thinking of one point isn't it why is it starting like this so if you carefully observe we have a pattern that is starting like this over here the same thing when we extrapolate we will be getting here since it is appearing like this here we are just copy pasted what is appearing here considering n number of cycles have already passed and that is why the waveform is starting like this so similarly the same holds good for the output current as well now what is the voltage across thyristor t1 and t2 at this instant if you carefully observe at zeroth instant Vs is equal to 0 isn't it so Vs minus E will be equal to minus E so we will be getting minus E it will start with minus E and gradually it continues to follow the supply voltage and at some instant when we are firing alpha that is the output voltage the voltage across the thyristor T1 and T2 will go to 0 that is it instantly goes to 0 and it stays at 0 till the instant where T1 and T2 is conducting and once T1 and T2 stops conducting that is at this instant and T3 and T4 is turned on what is happening it reverses its direction whatever negative voltage is supplied from the source will be appearing at this so basically it follows the supply voltage waveform so you will be getting like this and again we will be getting a same pattern over here as we had got in the initial case again the cycle repeats so this is how you need to analyze the waveforms and operation of a full wave control rectifier with RLE load. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.